Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, first I'd like to thank you all for being so patient with me last week when I wasn't feeling quite up to making a video. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to continue making videos up to when I have to go to have my infusion. Then I'll probably take a week off and then resume videos again. We'll see. We'll see how my body um, decides for me <laughs> what to do. Um, anyhow, today I have something really special to, to show you. I have a palette that you helped me create. It is called The Whispered Season and it is Deep Deep Light's new autumn palette which you can purchase on their website and for now just to clarify sorry everything is just <laughs> just blowing all over the place here um, because it's so windy just to clarify that the um, the palettes both palettes because there are two there is one 15 color palette and one eight color palette both palettes um, are not in stock at the moment but you can go to their website and click on the link that they provide so that you can be notified when they are going to be in stock. So without further ado, we are going to swatch these palettes and I am so happy how they, they turned out. I have, honestly, I have <laughs> not stopped painting with these two palettes. I love them both very much. I said as much to Deep Deep Light uh, that I've, I've just, you know, used these palettes so much since um, I put them together. So I have here two palettes. I have one which is a 15 color palette and another one which is an eight color palette and I'll be swatching them in here in this little layout that I created this little special layout I am going to just kind of put everything into its place so that I can start uh, swatching and I'll be with you in a few seconds. So before I start swatching I thought I'd show you two layouts in my sketchbooks that I uh, created using the palettes. Um, the first one is this one and I, as you can see, <laughs> I painted it in October and all these colours are colours that are in the palette so I just used the palettes nothing else no other colors from any other brand these are created using the palettes so this is the first one and um, I was really happy how they they just look together on on a page how they complemented each other and the other one is a little bit more muted and it's this one and that I haven't finished it yet. I need to put this piece of one of my stories on here so that I could draw on it and uh, finish the layout. But I thought I'd show you anyway. Um, so yes, so these are two layouts that I did, that I created in my sketchbooks. And why do I have two sketchbooks? I have two sketchbooks because <laughs> one is cold pressed and one is hot pressed. And I love working in cold pressed, but there are two setbacks for me when I work in cold press uh, on cold press paper. Is one, if I want to scan it for um, for artwork that I want to print, it is it's much more difficult to scan clearly, at least on my scanner, because of the texture of the paper, and also. The pen that I use, their nibs are quite fine. So, um, that 
they kind of you know degrade much faster on this paper I'm working on that I have ordered some pens that are with a sturdier nib so that I can work on cold press because I really love it as well but this is the hot pressed and this is the cold press so you can see more of the texture here and less of the texture on this one where it's cold pressed so those are my two layouts that I created using these colors and now I'm going to start swatching the palette for you so let's begin swatching and while I swatch I'll talk a little bit about why I chose each color for this palette so I'm going to start with Mirabelle which is a beautiful beautiful golden yellow which I thought would be essential for a palette for autumn it has like a glow to it it is it's just so rich and adds a lot of that golden glow you get in the leaves when you see leaves and the light shining through the leaves in autumn I thought this would really be perfect for that I'm going to dilute it a little bit so you can see it diluted now I have to say that this is how how the colors are in autumn around where I live so in different parts of the world there's going to be different autumn colors I'm sure but this is the issue, <laughs> is the is the reflection this palette is the reflection of the autumn colors in the mountains where I live so Mirabel it's beautiful it's got autumn's warm glow it's it's beautiful and and a tiny amount goes a long way now next we have rose hip which was a favorite of yours when you were voting for colors and I couldn't agree more I love this color so much um, let's see it oh it's so beautiful it is just so beautiful it it's not only the color of rose hips which is like is, is true to that color it's also the color of leaves some of the leaves around here have this color in autumn and some of the shrubs as well and berries so I thought this would be perfect for this palette this is diluted and it works so well with the Mirabelle the mushroom that you saw in my layout was a mixture of these two colors I used Mirabelle and Rosehip for that beautiful orange color next is a color that I added because I wanted a cool red I wanted a cool red in this palette and I wanted it for mixing reasons but also because this just reminds me of berries we have around here this cranberry color it is a gorgeous cool red and it mixes so well with the blues it complements the violets it complements the blues it complements the greens I just love it and this paired with bent grass which is in the other palette the smaller palette <gasps> gives one of the most beautiful pinks I love it next up is another favorite of yours which you um, kind of voted for quite a bit <laughs> in the um, in the previous videos 
for essential autumn colours. This is gold ochre and yes obviously gold ochre would be one of the colours that would be included in this palette. I think it is a beautiful beautiful colour and it's a beautiful gold ochre. Let's dilute that. Another viewer favourite was Musher's Green and yeah it is beautiful, it's a beautiful green that I use quite a bit when I am doing like variegated leaves so I'll just use a deeper green and I'll use this while uh, wet in wet so that it gives that glow in leaves. I'm talking a lot about leaves here but <laughs> autumn does have beautiful colours, beautiful leaf colours and I thought this, yeah, this was a must in this palette. This was essential and it has that same quality of glow that the Mirabelle has. Oh, next. Next is one of my favourite greens. It is Green Woodpecker. I love this green. I've said so many times that Deep Deep Light really know how to make natural looking greens. They do. And this is just, this is a beautiful green. This is mossy. This is, oh, it's beautiful. So we have a light green. This is our middle green, middle warm green. It is opaque, but it dilutes beautifully. Yes, it's beautiful. I love this, adding just a little bit of this, again, wet, wet in wet, um, to like burnt umber or cassel brown, just when you're doing, when you're painting a bark uh, of a tree, it, oh, it's just beautiful. And the way it moves on paper is, is lovely. I love this green. Now our deep green is forest green. Forest green is a lovely, deep, cooler green, very opaque, mass tone. And very moody and perfect for autumn, I think. Look at that granulation, it's beautiful. Oh, it's granulating so beautifully. I love this, so beautiful. So much texture in this green. And we are going to move on to the blues. My choice of warm blue is pigeon. And this is just, this colour is just so, uh, the word that comes to me is lyrical. It's just so beautiful. It's, it has a hint of violet in it. It's very opaque, mass tone. I have never seen a blue like this. 
in watercolour paints. It's just beautiful. It's one of my favourite blues. And diluted, it becomes this very soft blue lilac. Look at that, that's beautiful. How beautiful is that? I love it. Next we have our cool blue, which is deep blue, which I love, I love so much. It's lovely, lovely cool, almost has a hint of turquoise in there. Single pigment, if I'm not mistaken, single pigment blue. It's just so beautiful. And diluted. Gorgeous. Next we have wild berry. Now, this is a redder purple. I would say like an aubergine colour. <laughs> um, which is perfect for the fruits of the forest during uh, autumn. I apologise for the noise outside. I have the windows open. It's still not cool enough for me to cl close the windows. It's still quite warm. And diluted. Beautiful. It's almost like the um, the stains that you get on your fingers if you're going to eat something like from the forest, like berries and things. It's just beautiful. It's so beautiful. Bramble is next, which again is a violet that I love so much. It's so moody and you, some of you did point out to me in the video where I was swatching these for the first time that this would be perfect for shadows, autumnal shadows and I agree. It's so moody, so so beautiful, and it complements wild berry, I think, very, very well. I just want to eat this. <laughs> Those two edible watercolors. Please don't eat watercolors. <laughs> I was a figure of speech. Okay, those those beautiful. And you can see those oh I think it might have like wild berry in this. You can see it separating so beautifully. Lovely. Next we have one that oh my goodness, it took me days to decide on this because I was between this colour and burnt sienna and I kept toing and throwing and thinking and trying them out together and trying them out in the palette and this one. I know, I know. I mean, Burnt Sienna, you would think, would be the, the most obvious choice for this, this palette. But 
English Red one in this palette because it just reminds me so much of the pine needles we get round here. It's just that it is the colour of that and it reminds me so much of autumn and also it has this burnt sienna quality to it when it's diluted and I thought yeah this will work this will work whereas the burnt sienna is a bit more yellowy this is more orangey red and I think this will work better than the burnt sienna in this palette Now I'm going to move things a little bit along so that we can start swatching on this page. So the final three colours of this 15 colour palette are, we begin with Burnt Umber, which I, I had to put in because it is one of the most beautiful burnt umbers I have seen and it is it is the perfect complement to the greens beautiful, and the blues it is gorgeous it has so much texture and richness to it I'm going to dilute that can see all those little chocolatey bits in there it's it just so it's like rich chocolate have I said that before I think I have said that before it is so gorgeous and next we have Caput Mortum because I couldn't imagine an autumn palette without Caput Mortum in it. This is deep saturated earth colour. So, so beautiful. I know this palette by heart. <laughs> I've painted so much with it. Basically testing and mixing and trying to um, figure out what colours would suit other colours in the palette so I wanted this palette to be as as functional as possible so that you can have these gorgeous colours in this palette but you all could also mix them hence why there are warm reds cool reds warm blues cool blues warm yellows um, I wanted it to to work well in practice as well and the last one is Cassell Brown which is gorgeous it's a gorgeous cool brown very opaque very rich absolutely gorgeous again good enough to eat <laughs> but don't eat it it is just beautiful look at that separation there oh. and I'm just going to dilute it so you can see what it looks like diluted lovely so these are the 15 colors in the first palette the palette of 15 colors that I selected however I also created a smaller palette and this is a palette that is complementary to this palette but also can be 
obviously used by itself and it is all moody deep rich and kind of not gloomy colors i don't want to say gloomy colors i want to say some colors that have lots of atmosphere about them and it is an eight color palette as i said and i'll just move these this sketchbook to the side so that i can swatch these for you is that in yeah i think so i think that is in shot yeah okay i'm going to begin with bent grass and i'm going to do a not mass tone not completely diluted because i'm going to only do one swatch of each of these colors so it's going to be somewhere in the middle bent grass is a fantastic color it is it is gorgeous let me see if i can find a um oh here we go this color here is bent grass <laughs> when it is completely diluted and i did this little um layout in my cold press watercolor uh, sketchbook because I wanted to test out prickly pear which is coming up and this is prickly pear it's just prickly pear can you you know see that it's just prickly pear and there's some ancient red there but this color in the background here this light color is just bent grass and that is it has so much versatility so when it is um, when, when there's more color applied it has this color and when it's diluted it has a really soft beige color which I love now next we have wood cow wheat which oh it almost made it into the 15 color palette but I opted for the brighter uh, wild berry I thought this would suit in a more moody palette is lovely there is ancient red which is a lovely brownish red what's the sanguine color it's a lovely texture Next we have Dark Umber. Which almost made it into the main palette. But Cassell Brown won for the main palette. I thought this would suit the Moody palette a lot better. I'm saying like it was like a competition. It wasn't. Well, it was kinder of which ones would go into which palette. In the same way, I could say like the Cassell Brown almost made it into this eight color palette. But I thought the dark umber would suit this palette a lot better. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite colors, Asphalt had to be added to this palette. This gray, black, violet color, which has pink in it when it is diluted. I love so much.
the prickly pear which is a phenomenal colour it, it's, it's a palette by itself <laughs> it has so many colours in it it has red green brown it is gorgeous and I love doing like monochromatic paintings with this because it's so exciting to see where all the colours are going to settle on the paper Indigo, oh, sorry, Indigo Central America is next, which is lovely, lovely moody blue, and fern. I think lifts that up the, the rest of the colours, just gives it a little bit more vibrancy to some of the colours next to them, it just, it's the colour pop in this palette. Not too much, it's quite desaturated, but gives it just enough. And look at that separation there and the prickly pear. So though that is the more moody palette of the pear. I'll bring everything into focus. I loved creating these palettes so much. I loved all the the um the work that went into it to try that all the colors and see which colors worked more um harm harm harmoniously together <laughs> i am having trouble with my words today i apologize um the colors that worked more harmoniously together it for an autumn palette um yeah i, I just love them and let me see if i can bring one of my sketchbooks and talk about a little bit about what is what, what colour is what. So this is deep blue, this is indigo, this is a mixture of the violets here, uh, this is the um, Mirabelle and the rose hip mix. This is Caput Mortum, Caput Mortum again, and here is what I said about variegated leaves. You can see that here, um, you can have the pop of the, the Masher's Green, and then you've got the Woodpecker Green. And down here you have a little bit of Forest Green, and I thought it just worked really well. This looks like it is three greens in here, with a little bit of brown. Um, let me bring the other sketchbook. Here we go. This is um, bent grass background. Um, this is cranberry and the variegated leaves are cranberry and bent grass. This is Caput Mortum. Here's the pop of Masha's Green in, and the Forest Green. So you can see the brightness coming through there. Um, oh, it's something else I'm working on, but <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. And I think, yeah, that looks like Cassell Brown, the brown there. This is English Red and Burnt Umber and Cassell Brown. So you can see that they, I, th I think, I think they look really good together. 
as a group of colours. The deep blue, look at that granulation, that is gorgeous. And that, and that, that, oh. I love these colours so much. I will be painting with them all autumn. And I hope you like them too. So, as I said before, you can go to Deep Deep Light's website if you want to purchase these palettes. And you can press um, a link to be alerted when they will be in stock. I think there is a possibility that they will be in stock at the end of November. And when you buy, please use the code MOONCOLORS. That is M-O-O-N-C-O-L-O-R-S for 15% off. Uh, not just these palettes, anything you buy on their site. I'll link their site below and I'll link the um, the palettes below for you to have a look at. Uh, I wrote a little bit about the palette there so you might want, if you want to, you can read that. I am so, so grateful to Deep Deep Light for giving me this opportunity to, to make this palette. I love creating palettes. It's a huge passion of mine and I'm so, so thankful for this opportunity. I want to thank you all, of course, for being here and supporting me and being so kind and um, helping me and everything. I, I love you guys so much. I can't wait to be at the premiere tonight because I will be there tonight. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to seeing you all there. Um, I think I need to say my awkward bit which is if you like this video please like the video and if you want to see more of my content please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that YouTube will let you know when I have uploaded a new video and um, what else what else oh comments if you I would love to hear your comments if you would like to leave a comment and let me know what you think and uh, of the palettes are there palettes what you expected um, are you happy with the selection would you have something different in there let me know I'm always always so happy to read your your comments and I try to answer them all so I'll I'll leave you here um, I want to thank you all again for being here and next week I'm mm, we'll see we'll see what we have in store for next week I have a few things there that might happen but we'll see we'll see I can't promise anything so that's why I can't say anything <laughs> now anyway I love you all I'll see you soon keep safe keep creative and keep hopeful hold on to that hope never let go I'm, I'm holding on to that hope with you, okay? We're holding on to that hope together. Just never let go. Um, so, yeah. So, bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.